Hey guys, Bad Science here, and today I am hopping back into r slash malicious compliance for day number 11. And I have found one story in this so far, but the other ones I just choose by random choice. So the, But the one I found that I really wanted to read is, Hey Char, I tried to get rid of my dad right before he was able to get his pension. Oh wow, okay, it says small, but this is looking like a medium. My father worked for Forbes 500 company since the 70s, moved up the ranks as a software engineer and management, has patents for the company that saved it millions of dollars. He's almost to pension age and suddenly HR starts making his life miserable. He knows this trend was happening to some of his co-workers when they were getting close to the age 60 as well. HR lady calls him into the office and says that he was not punching in and out at the correct time. My father, an engineer, is very, very detail-oriented. He knew that these were false accusations and asked HR to prove it. They came back a week later and couldn't prove it, and he said, Of course you can't. I have been driving the corporate carpool bus from a major city 40 miles away from the company for the last 15 years. I always have 16 witnesses on my clock in time, and I haven't been late in 15 years. HR lady comes back a week later and said that they're going to fire him for letting people into the building without badging. He asked to see when and where he was letting someone into the building without badging. They showed that he held the door for his best friend, who had also been working there since the 70s, who had his foot cut off after having type 2 diabetes. He was in a wheelchair. Prior to my dad... Prior to this, my dad took the chief of security out for lunch and told him about how his, this company wanted him to leave before he got his pension, so he got some footage of his own. My dad said, That is very interesting. You're going to fire me for holding the, the door for my best friend of 35 years after his foot was amputated and he was in a wheelchair? Fine. Then I hope you fire the CEO and yourself as well. He proceeded to show footage of the HR lady holding the door for his friend and the CEO holding the door for his friend. My, fa my father ended up staying there until he got his pension. That's how you keep your money. <laughs> That's how you get your pension. But I I saw this story and I'm like, this is somewhat relatable, not to me, but to my mum. She has been working at the same company for 10 years at this point, And the manager at her workplace uh, has been making it a bit harder for her, especially since it's especially leading up to the 10 year thing and they're like they're really trying to make sure my mum didn't get it and saying like oh you didn't work these days so you're not getting it until you've worked the, the amount of days you had off and it's just like really? you're gonna be that petty about like t about my mum getting sick because those were the days when she was sick, which is really, really dumb. I denied the I denied the cop the bathroom code at Subway. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so I was working at Subway a few years ago, and a man came in with his wife and two children. I had all four sandwiches started when the man asked me for the code to the bathroom. The policy was you had to make a purchase to get the bathroom code. But, by the way, he was doing the potty dance. It was pretty apparent this guy needed to go. Obviously, either he or his wife will pay for the four sandwiches I've already started. The next day, my boss sits me down and lectures me about how the code is on the receipt for a reason. She watched the tape, see me give the man the code and tells me, I don't care who it's for, whether it's your friend, family, whatever, you name it, you do not give the code under any circumstances. Later on that night, 
I was working by myself when some guy in a trench coat and greasy long hair came in the side door and said, Hey man, some somebody got seriously fucked up outside. A long line of customers waited for me while I sub, suddenly, suddenly <laughs> grabbed the bread knife, sharp as fuck, and went around to check. It wasn't the best part of town, so you never know with people. Anyways, as Trenchcoat Man stated, someone was seriously fucked up outside. His face was all bloody and he was just a mess. Called 911 and went back to making sandwiches. Sometime later, a few cop cars and an ambulance showed up. They were doing their business outside and then one of the officers came in and asked for the bathroom code. Like six hours later, my boss told me not to give it under, under any circumstances without a purchase. I laughed a little and told him what I told all the other customers. I'm sorry, you have to make a purchase first. You can get a cookie which is uh, like 50 cents. Then it'll be on the receipt. He didn't realize the laugh was really at myself and how awkward of a situation he unknowingly put me in. Nor did I have a chance to explain it before the laugh and the rejection of the bathroom code caused the cop to become straight up furious. He gives me free warnings to give him the code. Each time, I'm, I tell him I'm not going to give it to him, and the customers are on my side telling him I'm just doing my job. After his third warning, he shook his head and muttered, I can't believe you're interfering with an ongoing investigation. And he uses the walkie on his shoulder to get some information. About five minutes later, one of the cops handed me a phone. I answered, and my manager said, Are you fucking serious? Long story short, the cop got the bathroom code and a free bag of chips. <laughs> like, he's doing his job. Like, under any circumstances, he can't give the code. That's what he said. He's just doing what his boss said. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Rental car company told me where to leave my keys, and when I left them there, tried to charge me for an extra day. So I refused to give them the car back until last minute. <laughs> I rented the car for five weeks while my car was being repaired from a car accident. The rental company had a couple great policies. No cleaning fee, no matter how gross the car was, and unlimited miles. Ideal for me. I live in the country, and going anywhere is a drive. When my car was finally scheduled to be finished, a Monday evening, I called the rental car company on Sunday, asked about return details. They said return time would be 5.30pm Monday, but I could just leave it at the shop and leave my keys, leave the keys in the sh shop's drop box. I said sure, and next night I went, got my car, Left keys in the box, got in my car, the check engine light was on. Fuck. Staff says, come back tomorrow and we'll fix it. I go home thinking that I'll be sitting on at the shop all Tuesday because no other ride. Tuesday morning, I wake up at 7am to the rental car company very angry and saying that they can't get into the drop box and shop until... until... 9. Yep. <laughs> I just, I tell them I just did what they said to do. They told me they would be charging me an extra day. At that, I'm furious. I leave my house later and arrive at the, sh at the ship, at the shop at 8.50. Rental guys aren't there. I sit around and the shop opens. I grab the rental keys and give them my car. Run time, rental car guys appear. They demand the keys and ask, and I ask if I'm still getting charged for an extra day. One guy is inspecting the car while the other tells me yes, I'm getting charged an extra day. Guy inspects it coming comes over and they and says car looks good. It should be ready to rent out immediately. I had it cleaned the day before because I didn't want to be a dick. Well I refuse to give him the keys. Since I'm getting charged an extra day, that means it's my car until five thirty today, right? 
At that point, he gets nervous. They said they need the car back. I'll give you the keys now if you don't charge me an extra day. But if I'm charged an extra day, I'm using it. He refused to bend, so I, bl so I leave. At this point, I'm petty and angry. So I go straight home, I own a farm, and it has been raining like mad lately. I get to work. By the time 10am rolls around, the car is covered in mud. This black car looks painted brown. I then trash the inside because I'm not that petty. I hop in the car and drive to the rental place. I'm pretty covered in mud at this point. I had put trash bags on the front seat to limit it. I walk into the rental place looking like I fell into a mud pit. The guy who refused to cancel the charge looks horrified. I tell him, this car is great for mudding. I'm going to go mudding for the rest of the day. Just swinging by to ask where to put the keys at 5.30. I'm all smiles and dripping sweetness. I watch the life leave him. His shoulders slump. And he says, if I return the car now, they'll cancel the charge because they need to rent out the car. I give them the keys and take an Uber to the shop where my car is ready. No cleaning fee and no extra day charge. Ha! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love how people are just reading the stuff on the edit. Like, I love how the first thing that he's put in the edit is the Uber. <laughs> the Uber, like, yeah. He didn't get mud in the Uber because he's actually a nice person. <laughs> okay. We'll do one last story. We'll find a short one. Sorry, you revoked my overtime privileges yesterday. This was several years ago and I worked at a redacted big name coffee shop. My shift was 5am to 1.30pm and often around 1pm giant groups of kids on school field trips would come through the area. This was a coffee shop located in a major California city, very close to a bunch of museums. I had been working a lot over time because of it to help my co-workers through the rush. I got written up by my supervisor for doing too many overtime shifts without approval. I was explicitly informed to not work overtime again. I had lost overtime privileges until corporate deemed I could have them again. And working overtime again prior to that will result in further disciplinary action. The day I was written up, right as my shift ended, three full Three big buses full of kids unload and fill the shop. At 1.30pm on the dot, my watch alarm goes off and I went to check out. The store manager who wrote me up the day prior said, Wait, where are you going? I reminded her that I'd lost my overtime privileges. Clocked out, retrieved the shift drink I had made for myself right before the rush and left. The next day I was informed my overtime privileges had been reinstated. This is, like, if you've got a person working overshift to actually help with the overflow of people at a particular time, like, <laughs> yes, revoke those privileges to that person. Yep, so... <laughs> That's, that is not the best choice of action. <laughs> Anyways, links will be in the description to my main channel and also this channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Ding, ding. I'm the Mad Scientist. Mad Scientist, out.